welcome you all to part uh, three of nuclei that is specific binding energy before we go with with that let us take an analogy in day to day life we have two persons here a and b a earns rupees 40000 per month b earns rupees 48000 per month so my question is who is more stable in his life and the stability depends upon number of members in his family a has four members in his family B has six members in his family. The stability is decided by how much amount is received by per person. That is amount per person. If I want to calculate, he earns 40,000 in his family. Four members are there. So per person gets 10,000. Here, he earns 48,000. He has six members in his family. Then 48 divided by six per person gets 8,000. By this, I can say that A is more stable than B. Even though B earns more, since he has more members in his family, he is not stable in his life, comparatively. Right? In the similar way, it is applied for nucleus also. Let us take two nuclei. One is helium and another one is lithium. Helium, two, four. How many number of protons are there? Two protons. How many number of neutrons are there? Two. What are the total members in his family? Four. Right? Like this. Lithium, three, six. How many protons are there? Three protons. What total members in his family? Six. Okay, let us compare. The binding energy we have calculated what is binding energy? Energy required to bind the nucleons together to form a stable nucleus. So what is the binding energy? 28.29 mega electron volt. It is calculated. So if we calculate what is the binding, the binding energy of this lithium, the binding energy is 31.99 mega electron volt. By this binding energy, we cannot find the stability of the nucleus. It can be found by taking binding energy per nucleon. Then how to do that? Binding energy per nucleon. How many members are there? That can be written as mass number, right? So E B divided by A. 28.29 divided by 4. How much do you get? 7.07 .07 mega electron volt. Here, 31 divided by 9. How many members in the in his family in here? 6. Let me take it as 6. So 31 divided by 9 divided by 6. So how much do you get? 5.33 mega electron volt. So by this, we can say that specific binding energy this is more in helium than in lithium by this i can conclude that helium nucleus is more stable than the lithium nucleus right by this i can just conclude that the, the stability of the nucleus does not depend on the binding energy it depends upon the specific binding energy the stability of a person does not depend upon his salary he the, the stability of a person depends upon salary per person that is specific salary okay let us begin with this thing so how do you calculate this it is the ratio of a binding energy to the mass number let me take now. ebn binding energy by mass number ebn that is binding energy eb mass number total number of nucleons are represented by mass number that is a right so binding energy per nucleon is called specific binding energy i'll be using either of these two words specific binding energy or binding energy per nuclear both are nothing but the same Specific binding energy is defined as the ratio of binding energy to its mass number that is specific binding energy and what is the significance of this let us understand I told you about this the significance or importance of specific binding energy specific binding energy gives an idea about stability of the nucleus which nucleus is more stable right higher the specific binding energy higher will be the stability right it can also be defined in this way it can also be defined as average energy required to remove a nuclear from the nucleus right so what is the amount of energy required to remove a nuclear if it is easy to remove a nuclear from the nucleus then it is not stable if the nucleus is stable it requires more energy to remove a nucleon from the nucleus so uh, we have understood about specific binding energy and its use now, right? So let us uh, now calculate what are the specific binding energy of all the elements in the periodic table and let us compare with it is mass, num mass number and we shall decide which nuclear is more stable. So my next study is about a binding energy curve. Okay, now uh, let us uh, begin with the binding energy curve. So this is the graph of specific binding energy versus mass number. We will be considering the nuclei of all the elements present in the periodic table and we will be calculating specific binding energy and uh, we will be drawing the graph. Okay, the graph obtained is like this and this curve is called as binding energy curve. 
okay let us analyze this graph and it, it it tells something about the nucleus right okay now first of all let us make some observations from that observations let us make some conclusions right here the first observations right so whenever i do with the observations i'll be characterizing it into three categories one is lighter nuclei whose mass number is less than 30 and another one is middle nuclei whose mass number is between 30 to 170 and another one is heavier nuclei whose mass number is greater than 170 okay based upon that i will be making some observations right from this let me make the first observation if you observe here this binding energy per nucleon special binding energy is low here as well as here that's why let me make the first observation that is binding energy per nucleon is low for lighter as well as heavier nuclei what about the middle nuclei you can observe here but special binding energy is almost to constant so the second observations let me write like this so epn is constant for middle mass numbers and Another observation what we will be making is which nuclei has highest specific binding energy that is about iron 56 which has highest binding energy that is specific binding energy let me write the specific binding energy is 8.8 .8 mega electron volt for iron if we compare with the uranium which is more than 200 mass number the specific binding energy is 7.6 mega electron volt which is lesser than that of I run here okay so like this by this we will be getting a graph like this now here right and the nuclei let me write like this nuclei of mass number 56 has the maximum specific binding energy and also when we observe this graph then we can find some of the peaks at the lighter nuclei so these peaks are due to nuclei of multiple of four mass numbers means 4 8 12 i think you can remember the example which i took earlier that is helium versus lithium helium we calculated its specific binding energy was around 7 and lithium whose specific binding energy was around 5 right so comparatively the nuclei with mass number of multiples of 4 are stable compared to the neighboring nuclei that's why these peaks are obtained let me write like this nuclei with a mass number 4 8 12 have peaks in the curve right which shows the stability compared with the neighboring nuclei and what are the conclusions from this let us calculate now right so the conclusions made here is when we when we were calculating the specific binding energy the specific binding energy we got around the mega electron volt in the order of mega electron volt so this tells that the nuclear force between the nucleons is attractive as well as strong right that is the first conclusion nuclear force is attractive and strong and from this graph we can say that middle mass number the specific binding energy is constant by this we can conclude that nuclear force is a short range force right okay let us make some more uh, conclusions okay by this first of all before i go with the next uh, conclusion let me tell you this is the step uh, what we say here stable region this is unstable because specific binding energy is low this is also unstable so specific binding energy is low always uh, unstable nuclei wants to become stable here right if it is a heavier nucleus right this heavier nucleus will split into two lighter nuclei do you remember when a heavier nucleus splits into two lighter nuclei their mass number will be lesser than that of earlier nucleus so this heavier nucleus splits into two lighter nuclei which come under this region that's why the heavy nucleus splits and this phenomenon is called as nuclear fission right okay let me tell you for a is equal to a is greater than 170 here specific binding energy is low due to which fission takes place right that was the explanation for why nuclear fission takes place in the heavier nucleus okay let us go with the next one these are the lighter nuclei these two lighter nuclei which are in unstable region they wants to stable they wants to become stable by combining so if for mass number less than 30 epm is low due to which fusion takes place two lighter nuclei combine to get a heavier nucleus which lies in this stability region and this is the main reason for nuclear fusion to take place right so these are some of the observations and conclusions made from this binding energy curve right thank you